before I show you the changing face of Sheffield just down here under the bridge you can just see some grass that was the rag and tag market which was an open an outside market with stalls quite a large market that closed, I think, probably 19, late 60s, 70s, and then it became the indoor sheath market. But people could pretty much walk under that without actually getting wet. So you can see the part way around about super tram going over. And I've just heard something today. Somebody's told me they're on about rerouting the super tram off here and actually building on the middle of the part way around about. I don't know if that's still going to happen, but that's just... The bizarre stuff coming from Sheffield City Council. So I'm going to walk up Commercial Street and show you what it's like at the moment. Now Commercial Street would have been the banking area of Sheffield. Now this beautiful building is called Canada House and I forgot the name it had before. But it was originally the Sheffield United Gaslighting Company. It was an oriental buffet place. It might have been called Pelham House, I can't remember now, but um, it was the Chef United Gaslighting Company. And um, as we're actually now walking over, I think it's called Shoed Hill. Shoed Hill. We've got the Ponds Forge swimming baths built for the World Student Games. We're on Shudale at the moment, or over the road, which is called Shudale. And underneath here, there were some interesting workshops for the Chef United Gas Line Company. You can get in through a door in the alleyway beneath. That was actually a, the Baraboy pub. And if you actually look behind that, inside what was the Barrow, Baraboy pub, You'll actually see windows and doors at the, actually the back of the actual inlet into the wall and it makes me think that underneath here there's more workshops that we're not even aware of because it's all bricked up. On the left hand side is Barclays Bank. Now this used to, used to be a beautiful building. I'll have to go further up to show you where the original Barclays was. But just imagine this was once a thriving commercial district in Sheffield. Not any longer. Just here, this building on the right hand side was the Sheffield Stock Exchange. The last I know it was be when it was last being used, I think it was uh, the Yorkshire Bank. But can, I just can't believe it. if that was Sheffield United Gaslighting Company, just to look at the money it must have cost to build a building like that. They just don't do that anymore because they just throw the buildings up, but the amount of money they must have ploughed in to build that building. But I think the she um, Sheffield Stock Exchange had the biggest telephone e exchange. I don't know if it was in the country at the time. Up here we have what was Dunn's Corner, this lovely round sort of Art Deco building. Now a little bit beyond it where it's the Easy Hotel, that was actually CNA's and I didn't realise it until I started doing an investigation CNA was actually a friend, uh, sorry, a, a Dutch company and I always thought CNA was British and that was existing before the Second World War and that, where the Easy Hotel is now that building got destroyed in the Second World War but this corner somehow escaped the bombing and the top corner would have looked very like that as well. We've got the A market area now which is totally dead. 
because the problem is Sheffield City Council shut down the castle and chief market, transferred it to the bottom of the moor and basically ruined this area of Sheffield. Now this is the traditional area for markets, that's why it's called A Market. See the stock exchange again and then you can see another view on Canada House. We've got Fitzalan Square, the old GPO post office. Now just here, where you can see this building, was roughly where the Admiral was, was the Newsreel Classic Cinema. And if I remember rightly, that was a two-storey cinema, originally started for Newsreels. And then on that side was the... I forgot the bank again now. Anyway, whatever bank I just said, um, was actually just there, the Lloyds Bank. No, sorry, Barclays Bank, not Lloyd's. Was just here, but this was a beautiful Victorian building. And I don't know how they got to knock it down. Absolutely unbelievable, really. And I, I think it came out wider, because I think they've actually widened the road here. So it probably came out like that, but it was a beautiful, imposing Victorian building. Over here. Where's the Mechabinger Hall was the Odeon Cinema. I wish I'd gone in there, I never went in there as a, a kid. I'm not sure when it was shut down, but I find it surprising. I've been in ABC, Gormont, Classic, but I never went in that one, and that looks one of the best cinemas in Sheffield. Then we got what they call, I think this is a white building here and this looks like very Italian if you go right up to it you can see car figures on it, they look like little messes or something like that the things are changing so quickly in Sheffield and I'm trying to remember things from the past I've had to do a lot of investigation to work out what's what. That what happens is you're trying to erase your history so that you can't remember your past. And can, once you can't remember your past, it can manipulate your future. So this uh, was bombed in the Second World War, the Marples Hotel. I think about 90 people lost their lives in it. They're sheltered in the basement when there'd been a bomb attack and they did actually pull people out alive the next day so that must have been quite amazing for those people but I wonder if they ever recovered from the shock we're actually walking up to the hole in the road and it's sometimes it's as busy as it used to be when there was a hole in the road Looking down into a very deserted Pond Street, and then there's a new student's flat complex being built up there on Flat Street. So, where we've got the Easy Hotel was actually something called Fitzalan Market in the past, I think that was early 19th century. And just on that corner, it was Burton's corner that got bombed in the Second World War, then became Peter Robinson's. And we're sort of approaching where, where the hole in the road was. Subterranean network of tunnels that got you from one side of the road to the other and also into all the shop basements and up into the shops, like you've got up here. You've got Rackham's. Came out of Fraser. Had a lift way up. 
but I'm going to struggle to get to the other side of the road and this is why we had the hole in the road originally because of the traffic that takes you down to Angel Street and Snake Snigel. See the banker's draft there, where the spoons it was, Midland Bank. But this area got bombed very heavily, so if you imagine CNA, Easy Hotel. Burns Corner Then Rackham's over here, that got bombed That was a beautiful Victorian building Where the Germans bombed Angel Street, bottom of High Street and then the Moor area, Sheffield So you'd be looking towards a hole in the road again, a disc in, a round disc in the floor. You can access it from eight corners and all from various shops. This is taking you down Arundel Gate. You can imagine High Street was a busy shopping area. Yeah. And about this point there was escalators out of the ground from the hole in the road, about here. And we'll cross over into the middle of the road because it's going to be easier to show it, yeah? So that's looking back down to us. Part way round about. But I would have said all that area probably got bombed in the Second World War with it being modern 1960s. Because it got incorporated with this. That was certainly bombed. And the uh, Easy Hotel there, and all this area, John Rackham's. Quite an interesting alleyway there called the High Court. I'm sure they could make more out of that with it being a making it into a covered area. Like, like a market area. I've seen places in Leeds where areas like that are covered over and then you've got all shops in it could do so much more with Sheffield so we've got the Telegraph building here originally we had a Telegraph newspaper which was in the morning and we had a star at night it's funny how they were profitable businesses and then they got took over by the globalists like Johnson Press who own nearly, well they did own nearly all the papers and I think they went into liquidation and before that these businesses were being run profitably for a long time I know the dynamics change but a lot of the time they get greedy, I think the star's now about £1.20, I used to buy a star every night when I was getting on the bus going home We've got Nat West there, back end of Rackham's no, it was John Walsh's, that was it. That was originally John Walsh's, and it became Rackham's, and then became House of Fraser, but they bought it out. But there was a takeover by London companies before the Second World War and after it. Still got an HMV in Sheffield. Which I'm shocked it's still around after all these years. We even had like record shops in my local town when I was a kid in Dinnington. And this is all we've got left, one record record shop I know of. 
Now this white building originally was John Cole's Corner. Knocked down in 64. Sold for a million pound at the time, so that was some real estate back in 1964. But this original building blended in with both High Street and the buildings on Fargate. So I just don't know how they got away with knocking that building down from an historical point of view. It looks awful, that building. Here, you got boots, boots and this area, there's a picture from the 1950s or 60s and it's like a, a mass of people walking around the corner the one thing i did notice about the people people were smiling back then you're lucky to get smiling faces nowadays now just here where you can see the telegraph building that's york street down there and the bottom end of there was the star building and they, were, they printed the Star, Sheffield Star here and then the little vans used to deliver it out to local shops and like even back in 2000 there were still little vans coming and picking up from the back of there and we had star sellers all over the city centre it used to be about 10p a copy in those days and now it's printed out at Dinnington it's not distributed around the city centre anymore and you're going to get, rather than getting today's news today, you get it tomorrow. And you're paying about a pound twenty. So we're looking back down High Street there. From the corner of Fargate there. Still got a Marks and Spencers. For how long that Marks and Spencers is going to last is another question. I'm sure, Sheffield City Council will pull all stops out to keep them. <laughs> oh, this is a beautiful building. You can see where we've still got the 19th century buildings, you can see where things got bombed out as well. I had to run then to miss a, a super tram. Didn't want to be on the front page of Sheffield Star tomorrow. Cathedral, it was Sheffield Parish Church originally, and then as Sheffield grew, it became the Cathedral for Sheffield. We've got some beautiful buildings down here. Then across here, we've got the Cutlers Hall. Got two beautiful ballrooms in there, and I've danced in them both. Looks like we had a Royal Bank of Scotland there, but no more. It's still got its name on it. Then St James's Royal, another beautiful building on High Street. So this was to do with the cutlery trade and putting the uh, Sheffield Hallmark on products because to say that they actually did come from Sheffield and somebody else hadn't put the name on them. I think there was a company in, was it Japan that was putting Sheffield on products in the past? Could be wrong on that. Well, I probably am not. Here we had the Midland Banks flagship branch in the city centre. It's now Tesco. Next to it, we have what was a stone house pub, and that used to have a courtyard in it. You used to look as though you were looking up outside, even though you wasn't. It's was painted on the roof, so I don't know what this building's used for now. 
But I'm told I think it was a gentleman's club originally. Yeah, my friend works. It's got a private lounge up there on one door and but we all knew it was the Stonehouse pub, very popular pub in Sheffield. Then you've got the new Orchard Square development. Just show you back now. Imagine high street, high street shops. Don't feel very shoppy around here anymore. And then another beautiful building. But I think this was a, a law court or something because you've got jails at the bottom. Not go much further on this one anyway. So it takes you down to the Pennine Centre, HSBC's uh, headquarters in the past. But the idea is to get snapshots of a current, show you how Sheffield is now. And what is migrating, so sort of approaching. I think it's West Street up there. On the left is Leopold Street. And this was, I think, originally Sheffield Grammar School. It's donated by one of the steel giants. It's now like cafes and whatever inside and function rooms and whatever and there's actually a hotel there I think as well and that, so that's Leopold Street takes you back down to where the town hall is Pinston Street this beautiful white building it's originally a telephone exchange so we're really at the top end of uh, High Street and in fact it says Church Street so we've probably come a little bit further up. It's probably a crossover line. <laughs> so that's just a quick view of Commercial Street and High Street in Sheffield just showing you the change in climate along here. Like I say, climate's never stay, climate never stays the same and it's not driven by CO2. So I'll speak to you later.